Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 67 of Build Your Stash and Craft. This week we are going to make some puzzle piece embellishments and the first one that I thought that I would show you how to make is one that I made a long time ago and in a puzzle piece sometimes when you look at them you can see lots of different things and make and make those things out of the puzzle pieces. So this is what I'm going to show you how to make today. This is Tommy the turtle and I've also got his father Thomas the turtle and his mother Thomasita the turtle. So this is what I'm going to show you how to make today. Like I said, I made this a long time ago. I used to make them and put like little magnets on the back or put a pin on the back. I just thought they were so cute. And so I thought I'd show you how to make those. So we're going to make those with the puzzle pieces. Like I told you, they have the three different ones. And the reason we do the three is because that gives us more space here. If we had one of the little holes coming down here, there's not as much space to cut our back of the turtle. So, but all you're going to do is you're just going to start at one side and you are just, let me see here, going to go up and around to the other side. Just like that, and that gives us our back. Now I'm gonna just go over here, and I've got this where it's sticking up a little bit still right here, so I'm just gonna go trim that down a little bit. I'm going to trim this one first and then trim this one just so that there's not a little square part there. I just want it to be rounded all the way down to the head and the tail. Now if you get to the point where your scissors don't want to cut it, you can always use a little bit of a knife or you can just use a little bit of sandpaper just to make it the way that you want it to be. So, And so there we have our, the back of our turtle and I normally paint them on the back side. If you're going to paint them on the front side, I would suggest to gesso them first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this be my head. No, I think this looks more like my head. So this is going to be our tail. And so for the tail, you're just going to just, you're going to use the little roundness of this dent. So you're just going to kind of come up to a point at that spot and then just round it around like that and that just leaves us just a little bit of a tail there and then we're just going to come up and bring this up to the tail be careful not to cut your tail off but when you buy a big puzzle if you cut the tail off you just start again so it's not quite as rounded as I usually make them but it still works and then the way that I do it is I leave these little bumps here for the feet and then just kind of round off just a little bit at the back and at the front just like that and that's it that's how you cut your turtle and then I just paint them green now I was going to show you that if you do only have this kind what you're going to want to do is just see how far these little um, indents are from the line of your little part here that sticks out so and then this looks like it's a little bit higher than this one is it's a little further away from this line so you can still use that and you can still round that off you just don't have as much of a back on it when you have to use this style so I'm just going to kind of go down and then on this one, I'm going to make my tail at the bottom of the little peg, just like that. And so there we go. So see, he just has a flatter back, but by the time you paint him, he'll still look like a turtle. We're all different, so... So you can still make them if you only have the, the four-sided one, but it just, you get a, a nicer um, roundness if you use the one that has three little stick out peats on it. So I'm going to set those over there and then we're just going to paint him green. And I'm just using the paints that we've already got in our stash. And I'm going to use, I don't know why when I make these, I have always painted them, I'll just put it down here, oh way too much. 
Um, I've always painted them the same colors. I've always painted them green with orange, red, and yellow on their back. But you can make your turtle any color you want to. If you don't even want the turtle itself to be green, you don't have to make him green. You can make him purple if you want to. And usually I put two coats of the green on. Make sure that you do your edges with your first coat. Because if you do it with your first coat, then you don't have to worry about it later. So, because usually I only put one coat of paint on the edges. And then two coats of paint on the top. And it just depends on how well it covers. If your puzzle piece soaks it in really bad, you might need three coats. If it covers pretty good, like actually this one covered pretty well, um, you can just go with one coat. So we're just gonna set him aside for a minute and let him dry. And we'll just work a little bit on our larger pieces. Now I did put our gesso that we made a couple weeks ago. I put some gesso on here and I am just going to paint this one. Let's see, what color shall we paint it? I didn't pull out a color. Let's go with a dark pink. Yeah, we'll do that, we'll do pink. And I just did a couple of these, but we'll we'll just do one here together, or as much as we can get done of one. And then I'll do the other one later. But if you gesso your piece, your paint does not soak in as well, and your paint sticks better. So, but I did do the cardboard side on this one also. Had a little goober in there um so you don't have to gesso the the plain side if you do the shiny side you really do need to gesso it because um your paint won't want to stick as well the gesso will stick a little bit better on the shiny side than your regular acrylic paints will so we'll just get the edges of this, and I think this one's just gonna need one coat also. And you can dry them with your heat gun if you want to. The acrylic paint really, because the puzzle piece is so absorbent, the acrylic paint does dry pretty quickly. We'll just make sure that we get the edges on there, because you don't wanna put it on a project and have that white edge sticking out or cardboard edge. Just need a little bit more pink paint. I didn't get enough green. Or I mean, I got too much green and not enough pink. There we go. That's a nice bright color. And with your puzzle pieces, you can put some string on them and hang them up. You can put them on the front of a journal cover. You can do all sorts of things. You can put them on a canvas with another project. So there's lots of things that you can do with them. <coughs> and if you check puzzle piece embellishments, I'm not exactly how sure, you know, like how people like are, what they're calling them, but there's a lot of people that are doing the puzzle piece embellishments now. And um, that's why I thought that I would do them so that you would have some in your stash so that you could just play along with everybody else. So, and on my puzzle piece, I am going to just kind of decide. I pulled a few things out. The one thing that I did want to do was I wanted to use some of the mousse that we did last week. And I just grabbed, I just grabbed a whole bunch of stuff out of my stash. Our, these are the coffee filter flowers and some of our, um, I think this was a, uh, our shaving cream colored paper I've picked out an inchy I cut a word out of um, our book our word find book I pulled out one of the bows that we made and one of our colored flowers another bow so I just grabbed a few things out and I grabbed out this stencil that I bought and what I want to use on here is I want to use the little rose so what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to, oops, I want to put it on first and then we'll set it aside to dry while we work a little bit more on our turtle. Now this should be more dry. Let's see, I wanted to put the, let me see, where do we want to put it? Well, let's put it right here. Okay, and I just want this little rose piece. So what I'm gonna do, and this may very possibly pull up my paint because I did not let it dry. So let your paint dry or use your heat gun and dry it. But I'm just going to put some masking tape around that flower so that I don't get my texture paste where I don't want it. So this is something you can do with your stencils. You can always pick just one little piece that you want to do and then just tape around it and that's the only place where your texture paste will get. So I just put a little bit of this on here. And then I'm just going to use my plastic card to spread it around. And there we go. Now we'll see how badly this is going to take our paint off. Ah, uh, it did. It took our paint off, but the rose looks really cute. So I'll just throw a little bit more paint on there. And learn not to be so impatient. The puzzle pieces, the cardboard is very thin. So, um, and you are going to want to go ahead and wipe this off right away. You don't want to let that dry on your stencil because it may not want to come off. So I will be back in just one second. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm back. So we'll go ahead and we will finish up our Tommy the Turtle. Just need to get my paintbrush wiped off here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some yellow and then some orange and then some red. And I just need a little dot of each. Put them all out right now. I do do them pretty much one right after the other. I don't really wait for them to dry because I like them to kind of blend a little bit and kind of feather them together. Okay, there we go. So just a little bit. And don't forget if you have too much paint, you can always throw it on a scrap piece of paper um, and then use that as a background for something. So I just hold my brush like at the edge where I want to start my back and then I just kind of swoop it around like that to get my back. And I just try and go down about to the legs and then come in about the back of the neck. And there we go. I have it really thick right here, so I'm trying to thin it out. But there we go. I'm just going to wipe this off. And then get some of the orange and then just make that a little bit smaller up towards the top of the back just gonna start there and swoop it around just like that and then just kind of dry brush that off and then I just kind of just drag the line a little bit between the two colors just so that it's not a real solid line. Just kind of drag it down a little bit and just kind of blend those together just a touch. Okay, so it kind of looks like that. 
And then I'm just going to put a little bit of red at the top. Now with the red, I only dunk like half of my brush. And kind of pat it off because I don't need too much. Because that one is just going to be right at the very top. Just round it around like that. And then again, I'm just going to dry my brush and then just drag it down a little bit. With the red one, I kind of like to make it kind of how do I say that? A little bit like sun rays. Just, you know, really kind of actually where you can kind of see the strokes a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit more up here. To make his back just a touch more solid. But leaving those lines that I just put down there. And there we go. Whoops. Now I really don't have quite as much yellow as I want down there. I'm not sure if I want to try and add that back in or not, but I think I'm going to. So I'm going to get a smaller brush because you can really see the green through the yellow. So I'm going to just, or yeah, the green through the yellow. So I'm just going to try and put a little bit more yellow here. because I want to have some real definition where his shell is supposed to be. There we go. And I'm going to dry that off. And because I've kind of got a line, I'm just going to pull that up into the orange just so that there's not a solid line there. The only place I like there to be a solid line is you do want it to be solid around the bottom to have a little definition there. So there he is, where his shell is. Okay, and then for his eye, you can take some black paint and just dip the end of your, just dip the end of your paintbrush in some paint and dot that on for an eye. Um, I'm going to just use my black marker because I can't find my black paint. So I'm just going to give him a little bit of an eye. But I want it to be pretty good size because I'm going to give him eyelids. So it is pretty good size, but then when you put the eyelids on there, it gets much smaller. So once he's completely dry, just like this, then I cover him. I covered Thomas with clear fingernail polish. And I covered Tomasita with glittery fingernail polish. Now the one thing is, is I used our gold gel pen to do the eyelids. And I'm not so sure if you can see that real well. But it's just kind of like a black slit with gold on the top and the bottom. And um, it's more defined, I think, a little bit on him. But the gold pen disappears with the fingernail polish. So once it's dry, we'll cover it with clear fingernail polish and then do the eyelids but so that we don't have to wait for it to dry I'm going to show you that right now and then after I cover it with clear fingernail polish I'll have to go back in and put them back but so for his eye you just want to leave a little slit in the middle for his for his eyeball so we're just I'm going to kind of start down a little bit and just kind of curve up and around and just cover the top part of the black and then just one little line on the bottom. And so that's how I do his eye. And then don't, don't put gold in the front at all. So it's a little bit wider at the top than it is at the bottom with a little bit of black in the middle. And so that's how I make Thomas the Turtle. And I just think he's cute, so I thought I would show you how to make him. So let's put some embellishments on this. 
I did, um, after the phone rang, I went ahead and recovered that with pink. So now I'm just going to kind of lay out some things and see what I actually want to put on here. And maybe it needs a little bit of color. I know what I'm going to do. Okay, I've got my word wildflowers and I'm going to cut that apart because it's too long. And then I'm just going to take, what color do I want? I think I'll do it in this pinkish purple and just go around the edges to give it a little bit of definition. Whoops! And if you don't get in a hurry, it's a whole lot easier. I'm just going to kind of put some little slash marks on here. Like that. Maybe put some on the bottom between the ones on the top. Like that because I accidentally made this mark and I couldn't make it go away. So that's all right, you just fix it. I could color the whole thing pink if I wanted to, if I didn't want to make slash marks on it. I'll just go around this one. Maybe I'll just put those on there. I think that I like the way that looks. So I'm going to use a glue stick. Whoop. Guess you have to have the glue stick sticking out to use it. I better cover this up. I didn't just glue that down. Whoops. Do that too close to the edge. There we go. Then you can cut around this or you can rip around it. A lot of times I like to rip it because I like the looks of like the ripped edges. But in order to save time, I'm going to just cut around it. Oops, I didn't get that glued down very well. There we go. I think I'm going to leave that rip part on the bottom. So let's do this one that way too. We'll see how that turns out. That's going to make it too big. So you just play with it. I don't usually have in mind what I want to do. And so I think that because we put the little slash marks on the wild, I think I have to do it on the flowers too. So I'm just going to go in and make some marks. Get it off the glue. marks on that one and then I'm going to glue them on here with my tacky glue I'm not going to glue them on here with my glue stick I think I'm going to put that on there like that and I think that maybe it needs a little bit of <coughs> excuse me it needs something in the background it really needs some 
marks or dots or let's see we could do this and well I'll just do it by hand right now just put some swirls it was just way too flat for me it didn't have enough definition. Now this is going to be covered up mostly anyways. But it will peek out here and there. And it won't be so flat. And then also I could use this to edge the edges also. And now I have paint all over me and my marker. I am just a very messy crafter. Okay. Now let's see what it looks like. I lost them. There we go. And I got a little bit of yellow and red right here on my puzzle piece. But I'll just cover that up with a flower. Just going to smooth this out. Now I'm going to have paint all over my glue jar. Oh, not too bad. Just a little bit. There we go. And then I think we'll just put one of our flowers over here. I think we'll go with this one. That one's just too tall for me. So I'm going to just use a little bit of our sticky back bling. Put that on there in a couple places and I think that I will call it done. Sorry about that. Today is not my day with phones. That was just a... Well actually that was Microsoft. They have found a serious problem with my computer. We get that telemarketer quite often. Alrighty, and I'm going to just decide where I want to put some of this. I definitely know I want some here. So I'm going to go with five right up here. Mm, do I want it straight? Or maybe I want it like that. No, I want it straight. One, two, three, four, five, or do I just want three? Nope, I want five. They say you're supposed to go in odd numbers because the brain likes that better. Cut that off. Well, you really have to cut it off because of the strings that hold them together. There we go. So we've got our texture paste and some bling and a flower and some words. And it probably needs a little something else. But I'm not sure what it needs. I have some wings that we made out of our coffee filters. 
wonder if I... I do kind of like that up there. What about down here? No, not on the bottom. I'm going to put those on there. So sometimes you'll just just make what you want to make um, just for the fun of it and then figure out what it's going to go on. If you know what it's going to go on, then you'll know whether you can have things hanging up over the edge or not. I think I just want those on an angle right there. And I think for what I have out, that's about it. I don't want any more bling on it. So I'm going to call that good. So there's our puzzle piece. And definitely I'm going to have to find something to put down here at the bottom. Just haven't figured that out yet, but I do like the way it turned out. And then we have our little Tommy the turtle. Maybe this is his sister. So, but I hope that you enjoyed watching me do these today. And I hope you have fun trying out some different puzzle pieces in different ways. Maybe we could put Thomas on there. Just put him right down there. Not really, but that is cute. Okay, and then I'll show you what we're going to need for next week. Maybe. Hmm, I'll think about that one because it's covering up my stenciling, but maybe I would like that that way. Okay, let me see here. I'm going to cover up my mess. And put this right here. We'll bring in baby Thomas and his mom and his dad. And what we're going to need for next week is... I have to wipe the paint off my hands. We are going to get some crepe paper. I got white because white can be colored any color so I would suggest that would be a good thing to get and the thing is with crepe paper this is so long I don't mm, I don't know if it has the length on here okay two rolls that are 70 feet long you've got 140 feet of crepe paper here so you really don't, unless you're doing something large, um, you don't want to buy one in every color because that's a lot of crepe paper and you'll never use it. So that's the biggest thing is, is thinking about, you know, how much you're going to use it. So we need the crepe paper and this spatula from the Dollar Tree. Now this spatula um, feels to me like it's made out of the kind of non-stick, I can't think of the name of it right now, the non-stick kind of rubber. So um, we're going to get one of these and our crepe paper, and then we will get some, these are iridescent shreds, so, but just any kind of a, you know, this is a plastic shred, and we're just going to make some embellishments, so I just thought this would be pretty to throw in like behind, and maybe I'll put some of it on here. Um, you know, but the iridescent shreds you'll be able to use for a lot of different things because of their color. Um, or you could get white ones. This is not something that you really would want to color yourself. So just find a color that you like that you think may go with a lot of your projects. Just as some kind of an embellishment. Just something to dress things up. So that's what we'll need for next week. We will need a rubber spatula because we're going to use this for our hot glue so we don't burn ourselves. We're going to need some gray paper and some little shreds. If you don't want to get this, you can also get some, um, like some eyelash trim um, in a color that you don't have or something like that from the Dollar Tree. Just something to 
put with your embellishment stash. So that's what we'll need for next week. So that's three dollars. We have fourteen fifty in our bank right now, and so we're going to add two more dollars to our bank. So now we'll have sixteen fifty in our bank. So this is what we did today, and I hope that you enjoyed watching. I hope that you give it a try and have fun making some, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.